Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, welcome to the post-game reaction of Oilers After Dark episode 198. And boy, oh boy, do we have a doozy for you. If you didn't know, now you know the Chicago Blackhawks were in town to take on them Oilers. 14-0 and 0 Oilers, 14 wins in the last 14 games. Win streak, you know what I mean. Let's just uh, put it before I say anything, before I even go any further. Without further ado, I have a picture to show to you. Thank you for the 600 subscribers. Yes, this channel has just hit 600 subscribers. It's just the beginning, folks. It's just the beginning. Nothing more, nothing less. We're gonna keep going straight to the top of the thousand. 400 more. I think we can get hit that by the end of the year. Anyways, guys, now we move on now that I've kind of patted ourselves on the back. And by ourselves, I don't mean me, BW, Kevin, Northern Farm Girl, Stephanie, Chemo, Dan, the Facebook people, Ross, um, Edmund. Adam, I don't mean those people. I don't mean the admin group and myself. I mean pat on the back to you. You, the followers of Oilers After Dark. Because again, I can say this till I'm blue in the face. Without you guys doing what you guys do, joining me in the chats, commenting on the videos, liking the videos, hopefully sharing one or two videos, without you guys doing that, there is no way that we can continue to do this with the audience that we are reaching. 600, wow, that's... Uh, that's you guys. That is 100% you guys, not me, not anybody else. You. You, the community. You, the people. Um, without further ado, though, let's get into the game. Yes, the Oilers won 3 nothing over the Chicago Blackhawks. We got a couple of graphics because a couple of graphics are needed. Picard being one, two of the graphics. Two, two big things happened last night for Picard. Um... But to say that it was all sunshine and daisies, no, the Oilers had a bad first period. A lazadaisical first period, followed by an okay second. But yet again, yet again, an amazing third. So give credit where credit is due to Chicago. They were the team that played the night before. They were the team that was more ready to start this game. They gave the order fits for 45 minutes. A little transition here. Whoop. Whiteboard. Like I said, there's no scoring in the first period. In the second period, though. <coughs> Late power play for the Oilers. Was it a trip? Wasn't it a trip? Yes. By the letter of the law that was changed, I think it was changed two years ago. It doesn't matter if you get puck first. If you get puck and still follow through and trip the player, a penalty is a penalty is a penalty is a penalty. It's about damn time they called one because Chicago's getting away with a lot. I get it. I understand it. I know why. Doesn't mean I like it. Connor McDavid on the power play, assisted by Drysaddle and Hopkins. Woo, one nothing Edmonton. That was early in the first, second period. And I mean, like within the first minute, minute and a half of the second period. And then nothing else after that. There was a breakaway I'm going to show you guys. Again, it shouldn't have been a breakaway. It should have been a penalty shot. It shouldn't have been a breakaway because the Oilers' defensive breakdown. They shouldn't have allowed that to happen. But the fact that it did happen, Picard made the save on the shot. They awarded a penalty shot. Timber, timber, timber. McDavid has been hauled down on breakaways and not near a shot but only a two-minute penalty was rewarded. This guy got a full shot off, and I don't even think that DeHarnay did anything that warranted even a penalty. He was good position. Okay, so he put his free hand on the player. Seen that a billion times before. Every shift McDavid is on, but I digress. Pick card with a huge save, and yes, I will show that video too because it is worth mentioning. And Whistle, you had your game going. Unfortunately, Picard was just a wee bit better. Moving on to the third period, like we do. Oilers goal, Zachary Hyman. 
assisted by McDavid and Dreisaitl, make the score 2 nothing Edmonton. And then there was a uh, late period shenanigans with an empty net. Hyman gets blatantly tripped. From his ass, he takes a shot at the net, hits the post. Puck is held in the zone. McDavid gets the puck. He's looking for Hyman. He's looking for Hyman. He's like, fuck it. I'm shooting. I'm scoring. Let's take this 3 nothing victory. That should have been a awarded a goal because there was no goalie in net. That was an automatic awarded goal. Hyman gets the goal, no assist, unassisted. But no, the refs are going to ref, and they're going to do what they want to do. I'm not a fan of these two refs I ref last night. Not saying their names. You could look it up. Uh, at the end of the day, Oilers win 15 in a row. Picard's 100th NHL game. Fifth career shutout. First one with the Oilers. Shots were 27-34 for the Oilers, but I promise you it was not that way early. Chicago had the shot total for the majority of the game. Chicago didn't get a power play. Oilers really didn't do anything to get warranted any. Chicago got one penalty and Oilers scored on it. There could have been a heck of a lot more called, but hey, for the most part, refs let them play. 27 saves by Picard. Picard is our first star with a 100 save percentage. Shout out. McDavid is your second star. Two goals, one assist. And Dry Settle is your third star with three assists on the night. Quietly, Dry Settle had three assists on the night. Now that you get it good, got it good and understood, let's get into the pictures. The pictures? The pictures. And then we'll get into the video. So, pictures. Here's your first one. Picard, congratulations on your 100th career NHL game. This is the pregame warm up. That's why you see the black on the post. I don't understand it, but that's just the way she goes, I guess. And now we're going to... Oh, boys. We're going to talk about something else, too. There's something else I didn't talk about, but we'll talk about it. Don't you all worry. Here's the first goal that the Oilers scored on the power play. This is the first little bit of the power play. Just McDavid doing McDavid things. Passes to McDavid. Dicked, oh, off the post. Hawkins eventually gets it back. And I'll, they, this, just look at this spatial awareness by the Oilers. It's back in the zone. There's 20 seconds left in the power play. McDavid brings it in. Passes it to Drysidle. Drysidle over to Hyman. Sorry, Hopkins. Hopkins back to McDavid. Where was Morazic going on that one? Could Chicago have challenged? Probably, probably not, because Marazic was out of the net by the time he was touched. It was a little too late. Like, Marazic is three feet outside the blue crease. If you're going to call that goalie interference on Hyman, this kid will never, ever catch a break the rest of the season. McDavid, probably the easiest goal, well, second easiest goal of the night that McDavid has scored. What a backhand. Backhand and a beauty. Now the second part we're going to show here, very simple, it's a penalty shot. And whistle goes wide, takes the shot, Picard! Like I said, we're in the second period with a minute and a half left in the second period. Shots are now 20 to 16 for Chicago. And Chicago ended with 27 shots, so they only took 7 shots in the second and the third period. Boys, what I love about this, Deharnay comes. DeHarnay comes and speaks to his guy. I'm going to stop it right there. DeHarnay comes right here. What do you think he says there? What do you think DeHarnay is saying in that situation? Buddy, thanks for bailing my ass out. Thanks very much. Appreciate you. Like, DeHarnay is definitely a team player. One of the guys that's probably one of my top three favorite players right now on the Oilers. He's definitely my top three. My other two are Dreisaitl and Hyman. Uh, just a hell of a guy. Hell of a locker room player. And he can play on the ice. It's like they say, if he's good in the locker room, leave him there. But here's the second goal scored by the Oilers. Another zone break out there. You've got... Dreisaitl to Hyman to McDavid. Back to Hyman and doing what Hyman does. Yes, it's a tap-in. Yes, it's his 20th goal of the season. Yes, most of those goals are because of McDavid and the assist factor. 
But you still have to put the pucks in the net. You still have to be in the right place at the right time. I'm tired of everyone saying, well, Hyman's only this good because of McDavid. Not everybody can play with the speed and the mindset of McDavid. Just what a beautiful tuck. Like, just a beautiful tuck. McDavid with a nice little pass, tuck, spin around. How you doing? Hope you guys enjoyed the music that went with that video during the live stream. Oh, like, and now we're going to show the third goal, an empty netter. And this is what I mean when I say refs. Possibly not. Okay. Did I mess that all up? I might have. Oh, boys. Yep. Here you go. Here's the third goal. My bad on that. See what I mean there, Ray? Hyman? He got knocked on his ass. Ref staring at the play. Nah, we can't call that. Can't call that at all. McDavid's looking for him. He's he's like, you know what? F it. Just F it. Fuck it all. I'm just going to rip this shit in the back. And he even says, dude, I was looking for you. Yeah, I don't know. No worries, man. No worries. Like... Right here, like, ha, uh, it, they didn't go back far enough. They just wanted to go back and show. And then the end of the play here for the victory. Make it 15 in a row. Oilers be buzzing. Oilers be humming. Like, he's legitimately tripped. Like, I don't get what you think. He just fell on his own two feet, ref? It is what it is. We can't bitch and complain about everything that the refs do. It makes no sense what the refs call and what they don't call. But a little stat that I found very quirky, and maybe not a lot of people know this, but you will now. Sam Gagne, history made last night. Oh, dang it. History was made last night for Samuel Gagne. Only player in NHL history part of a multi- 14 game winning streak did it with Columbus when they went on their 16 and 0 game win streak on their 16 game hitter now he's on a 14 15 game heater with the Oilers I forgot to update that graphic but first player to be 14 first player to be 15 will he be the only player to get 16 in a row Again, we'll find out Saturday at 2 p.m. I showed you the Picard getting himself the glory. Now I gotta show you this graphic here. This is pretty cool. His fifth career shutout. His first since 2018. It's a long time between shutouts, but hey, some goalies go their whole careers without getting any. He's got five. One with the Oilers. Huge shout out to Captain Picard. To Pickles, to Picks, to Captain Picard. He's got nicknames coming out. The Wazoo, just like Skinner's got nicknames. Skin Dog, Skins, Mustachio. I can go on and on with nicknames for goalies. Now, little fun little graphic here. 15 wins. Stuart Skinner, Captain Picard. 15 wins. If you don't recognize the movie, it's a movie called 15 Minutes with, I think it's De Niro? Roberto, Robert De Niro in it? He's one of the actors. Pretty good movie. Thought I'd throw that in there. And like, like we always do, right? Like Because, you know, it's fun. It's fun to make fun of people. It's fun to be funny. We're going we're gonna to leave you with this. Boys, step aside, time to let the big dog work his magic. Do you like to draw with friends? I do. But I'm not very good at it.
Oilers win. Oilers win. Let's play some La Bamba, baby. 15 in a row. Saturday afternoon at 2 p.m. They go for 16 and tie the Columbus Blue, Brackets, Blue Jackets record. Followed by a break. Now, you guys aren't going to see me. Whoa. You guys aren't going to see me on Saturday. I'm going to be at the game. BW is live streaming for your guilty pleasures. 2 o'clock start. Note the time. 2 o'clock mountain. Saturday afternoon. It's going to be a good game. Nashville is in town. They're, they haven't played since two days ago. So they're going to be well, well, well rested. They're in Edmonton waiting, chomping at the bit to break this they're chomping at the bit to break the winning streak. From here on out, every team that comes into Edmonton or every team that plays the Oilers are looking to do one thing and one thing only. Break the streak. Good teams have tried. Bad teams have tried. Mediocre teams have tried. All have failed. There Are Nashville the team to do it? I don't think so. Again... Just my two cents. But if you go check out my January preview, I did say Oilers were going 11-0. Refresh my memory. Are they 10-0 right now? 10-0? Sometimes a blind dog finds a bone. Even the dumb squirrel finds a nut once in a while. I found a nut. Anyways, guys, my name is Matt for Oilers After Dark. We'll see you guys in two weeks. See you guys live in two weeks. Yes, I'll do the post-game reaction for Saturday. I also got the preview and the review, the February preview, the January review, and a very special episode 200 shout-out video to quite a few Facebook people, to YouTube people. Again, 600 subscribers, guys. You guys are amazing. That's it for me. Thank you for watching. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. If you've been here for a while, hit the like button. Leave a comment. Let us know what your thoughts are. I may not always be right, but sometimes I hit a home run. We'll see you guys in the next video. For now, peace.